Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the gift and happy early Christmas. Yeah, we've got um, a really wonderful show for you today. I, um, I love the way that these come in because usually earlier in the week, I start praying on what my next show is going to be. And as you know, my, my show is based on a lot of the PR and just like the current happenings in the ministry. So it's, it's usually fairly, you know, fairly vibrant. There's always a lot going on, as you know. And this week, what I was really activated by was this upcoming rethinking, rethinking sickness event and just Calico's journey with it. So I have Calico here with me today. She'll be joining me from La Casa and I'll introduce her in just a moment. Oh, you can see her on the screen. And um, yeah, just join us today as we, we take a deep dive into the mind and rethink sickness. Wonderful. Well, as I said, I've got Calico here with me today, and um, I'm always just really excited by these shows because it's my opportunity to just get really curious about something. And today, and this past few days, i um, just been joining with Calico, and we've been diving into this and what it means and what it's been for her, and it's just been a tremendous journey, actually. So I would love to just open it up saying thank you so much for joining me today, Calico, and we're rethinking sickness. What, uh, what comes to your mind when you, when you feel that? Um, hmm. You know, what's there right now is, I think, rethinking sickness, and I just feel like it's my mission in form <laughs> right now. Um, and it's probably been my whole, this whole incarnation has been building up to this. Um, you know, being a physician for 35 years and really wanting to explore why some people would get better with certain things and others wouldn't, but there was no consistency. There was never consistency. And that, that bothered me. <laughs> And um, so really, A Course in Miracles, when that came into my life, it was really seeing, and you know, and this, is, this has been layers and layers of coming into this, sickness is only of the mind. And, um, you know, David had a great quote. I'm, I, I, it, I should have it captured. I don't have it memorized yet, and I don't know why. This is from David. <clears throat> the belief that we are human being on planet Earth is a distorted perception. It is the sickness. The sleeping mind would rather remain tiny and call forth a witness of sickness to prove that it is right about its tininess. And I, I, I must say, this quote has bothered me. <laughs> It has disturbed me, <laughs> and it's all perfect because it just allowed me to go deeper and deeper into prayer with it because the amount of guilt that's there was enormous initially. And we talked about this. You know, it, it, uh, the fear was huge, and yet staying with you know, the way in which David and the living miracles are really living a Course in Miracles, has, only, has been my answer to an eternal prayer. Yeah. Of, and I'm, you know, what, what better experiment than to use my body <laughs> in this whole investigation of illness, death, and getting that those are just concepts in an insane world. And um, my sanity comes from something so far greater than the world. And um, 
Yeah, that's what I get with rethinking sickness, plus a whole lot more. I mean, and that's what we're going to be discussing in rethinking sickness. Um, we're going to be holding each other's hands pretty tightly. And we're going to jump into the rabbit hole that takes us vertical. Um, and it's going to bring stuff up. And um, that's the way this works. And it's a powerful process. And I'm so grateful to be um, exploring it with so many other courageous people exploring their lives through these principles. Because not all lives look alike. And yet the fear is the same. Yeah, I just feel like this topic is so huge, actually, because what you described in that course quote there doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the body. But and the, actually, the title of the, the show today is called Health is Inner Peace. So this actually goes so far beyond, far beyond the body, actually. <laughs> but uh, I think that's why I'm so, part, partly why I'm so inspired by this. Number one, um, I mean, I'm just blown away, actually, by the way that, that you are rethinking sickness. And I know we've been talking about this a lot um, yeah, wow, I just feel bursting with questions, actually, which is what I love about these shows so much. But I guess the first thing I wanted to share is you describe sickness and the body as a gateway, actually. But it goes to something far, far deeper than the body. And I just have appreciated the way that you've been using this. Like, this is your journey that you now have the opportunity to really share. And um, even just to share a brief parable. So I asked Calico to be on my show this week and um, she lives just down the road. <laughs> and so I was like, oh yeah, come on up to the studio. And Calico just went into deep prayer. And maybe you want to share your experience, Calico, because like maybe you want to just share the, the miracle and the prayer and, and your journey in rethinking sickness, just in this tiny little microcosm example of why isn't Calico sitting in the chair next to me today? Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, this is, you know, there's been a lot of actual um, miracles coming out this past week. And that I need to say, you know, this is a six-week program that's just going to open the door and kind of allow people to move in a direction that they're perhaps not going in right now. But the healing is deep and ongoing. And, and there's so much joy each time I take on one of these little burps that come up. Um, yeah, so we live right down the road from each other, and Christmas is tomorrow. And um, I, I actually, one of the reasons I stopped doing Beyond the Body was um, getting to the studio has, <laughs> has been problematic. There are n an enormous amount of steps <laughs> to go to get to the house and then there's another flight of steps to get to the studio and uh i you know i was holding it in my mind as the mount everest <laughs> my personal mount everest it's like okay and every time i take the steps it's a it's a walk in prayer you know every step is a walk in prayer and you know the reality the body is always changing and boy i get that more more now than I ever have before. And it's not for me to judge it. No matter how it changes, it's, that's a judgment that there's no cheese down that tunnel. So I have gotten to the place where I do not look to the body for who I am and how I'm doing. In, as I stay in the moment, I'm completely pain-free. There's nothing there. But mobility has been one of those things that hasn't been... It hasn't, it hasn't occurred as easy. And uh, so when you asked me to come to the studio to do this, and then tomorrow we're having a big Christmas celebration also at the same house, and there's going to be lots of beautiful music and singing. And I know how this process kind of takes a lot out of me. When I climb the stairs, it's like um, there's a recovery. 
you know, I, I liken my body to an, an old vehicle without a radiator, you know? Without water in the radiator, it's only going to go so far, it's going to heat up, and then there's going to be a period of time to recover. And that's kind of the, the way my body is experienced over here. I, there's no metabolism, so if I do anything physical, it heats up very quickly. And then there's a period of time that I need to just recover energetically. And so I didn't want to do back-to-back -back climbs up on Mount Everest. And I made the decision that for me, as much as I absolutely adore this program, and I do, I've spent, and Suzanne and Jackie, we've spent over a year on it. Um, I would rather listen to the music from the angels that are going to be singing tomorrow. And so I opted to choose that instead of this program. And then <laughs> you <laughs> wouldn't take no. <laughs> and it seems like there's quite a few people that wouldn't take no this week. And it was all beautiful and just for my healing. Because um, every time... I said no. It was an opportunity to rethink. It's like, okay, who's saying no? What's saying no? And um, and then you kept coming back with new ideas, and you know, I had exceptions, and no, 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 no. And so anyway, you made it work, and you wouldn't let up. And it's like, you know, that's why I love living in community. I must say, it's uh, there's no agreement in no. There's just no agreement and no. And that's really where rethinking sickness is going to go. There will be no agreement in being sick. And we're going to, I'm start. you know, I can't say that because there are going to be some surprises in the program. And I can't share all my goodies. <laughs> but it's just we're all going to hold each other as not a set of symptoms. We're going to hold each other as the mind of Christ. And when you, when you join with a brother in the mind of Christ, you know, powerful things. Miracles are going to be exploding all over the place. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. And I, I've seen the backgrounds of many of the people that are going to be in this program. And the commitment is deep. And uh, I don't know where it's going to take us because I'm on this journey, too. I'm on this journey on a daily basis. I mean, just this past week with the nose and the, oh, take, do another spiri, go into this, what's there? And uncovering all these silly beliefs that um, stop me. And I'm, I'm not willing to be stopped. So, yeah. Well, that's what I love about this example so much, actually, is because we joined we joined and I had this invitation and I was bursting and I, I wasn't quite as forward as that as I had seemed on the phone. I was like, Calico, I really feel this. You know, I just, it, it activated in my mind. It was like a, a switch got turned on and I was like, rethinking sickness. This needs to be shared now. Like there was this huge, huge, like something wanted to be born out of it. And so when we had joined and you'd shared what you shared and I just actually so appreciated the amount of prayer you put into it like this is rethinking sickness in action like is it about the program or is it about the actual process of rethinking sickness and I so loved that you were so committed to that it was gorgeous and then still that persistence in my mind of like, I wouldn't be so activated with this if it wasn't supposed to happen. And being willing to let it go too, but it was like, ah, there's another way. So yeah, it was just wonderful. And then um, just hearing your, your transformation with it, like there's, this is what I love about the gift, you guys. So it's not about the rethinking sickness course. It's about the fact that Calico is rethinking sickness right now. We're all doing that with our, you know, our respective sicknesses. It's not just about the body or about death or sickness, actually. It's about depression, anxiety, like, as you said, you shared earlier with that course quote, Cal Calico, it's about the, the belief that you live in this world. That's sickness. So I just so appreciated um, the way that this show developed and yeah, just feeling that strong activation with 
there's such a tremendous gift on offer in this program. Like, you can call it life-changing. This will redirect the course of your thinking and it will show up in your life in that way. So, <clears throat> you know, and that's what you were just saying. You know, no matter what is in the mind, it's fear. You know, I happen to have been given a cancer diagnosis, but that's no different than anyone else's fear, fear of losing a child, fear of never having a relationship, or fear of not getting another job, a better job. It's just fear, and it manifests in whatever way it manifests. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm a horrible course quoter, but in the book somewhere it talks about the, the problem can appear different. The solution is the same. And it's like, it doesn't matter if um, a child doesn't want to go to school versus being diagnosed with terminal cancer. The solution is the same. And it's, you know, who am I trusting? Who am I listening to? Am I willing to see this differently? through the eyes of Christ. And that really is, I mean, it's a simple solution, but the process is, well, you know, it's, it's eternal. And, you know, the world of delusion that we live in shows up as the delusion that it looks like until all of us take on that fear, whatever that fear is that feels like, oh, I'm not gonna survive this one. This one, uh-uh, this is my sacred cow, don't go there. You know, you can, you can deal with anything else, but don't deal with my sacred cow. And it's like, and this is just saying, no sacred cows allowed. <laughs> We're going for it. And I'm in this journey too. I mean, I've been healing, <laughs> sick, rethinking sickness for the past year and a half since I started this project. And I will continue probably through the entire course. And after, because it's what I gave myself in this script to allow myself to fly in the face of some big fear. Yeah, and what a blessing it is actually that, as you said, it's all the same fear. And here we have something like sickness showing up, a rethinking sickness more specifically, where those that have that as a very present experience, whether you want to call it... Um, I don't know if you want to call it depression and anxiety or you want to call it terminal cancer. Like there's an actual, that's a wake up call. That's an alarm bell that lets you know that there's healing that can happen. And so something like this with a facilitator, one such as yourself, Calico, to really walk through that together because anybody will tell you living in this community, it takes mighty companions like... The course is, is an excellent, of course, pointer back into self-responsibility and, and ultimately, am I willing to accept the correction? But your brothers are so, so invaluable along this journey. In fact, I think there's something in the course that says, speaking of horrible course quarters, I think there's something in the course that says, um, it is impossible to underestimate your brother's value. That's what it is. And... Yeah, truly, um, that's really what this course is. It's not, it's not, you know, the trappings can change, but really it's an offer from a mighty companion holding out their hand saying, hey, are you struggling with this too? Because I'm walking through this and I'd love to share this journey with you. So yeah. I call it the perfect adjunct therapy. No matter where you're finding yourself in a sickness model, whether it's um, a, a a family member that you love that's sick or you are experiencing or have been told some diagnosis. Again, it's like, let's all join in this because we're kind of in a similar paradigm and there is a way out of this that, and it's not about healing the body that may or may not, not happen. And that's perfect. However that goes. But what I do know is that, are you joyous? Are you happy? And if you're not happy, then this course is for you, because I guarantee that's where we're taking this. No matter what your circumstances, no matter where you find yourself, 
you can be there in a state of grace, which is joy. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's really the offering of this whole program, is to bring whatever's there, let's put it on the altar, and let's join in seeing it all to differently. Because really all, and any fear, it's not just sickness. Well, sickness is just fear. Um, but it's like David was saying, it's that I, I, it's easier to accept my tininess than to really get how great we are. And, um, you know, that it sounds like a complete oxymoron. Like, why would you fear being fabulous? Well, we do all the time. We die all the time. It's like, and, and that's the other thing I want to offer people that are out there that uh, have been given a death sentence or they see themselves as dying or whatever. There's another way to look at it. And if you're willing to take on going into some real skinny branches in your mind, join us. Because I, you know, I, I was in hospice and I was out of here. And there was a piece of me that was completely resigned. It's like, oh, great, death would be easier than this. And I'm just here, that was 10 years ago. And I'm just here to say, no, that's, that's not what Holy Spirit is asking for us. Holy Spirit wants us to be joyous. Our only job is to be happy. And if we're resigned, to any kind of living situation that is bringing us less than happy, this is the program. You know, we're just going to take it on and see where it takes us. And I have no idea. I have, I mean, I've set up what I've set up, and we're just going to take it and flow from there. Very tabula rasa, <laughs> to quote another beautiful program. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And so the beauty of this as well is that it's interactive. And I just wanted to go into that for a moment, Calico, because there's a number of facets of this where you get, you get to experience the value of having a mighty companion along. So we've got, um, I keep looking over here because I've got it up on our screen. We might share a little bit about it with you. But um, you've got this doorway course called Rethinking Sickness, which is available and it's multi, multimedia and interactive in a way. Um, and you could, you know, you could just do that. But like, what is the value of actually having these other elements in there? Because the fear is going to come up, actually. The fear is going to come up. And when it does, what, what happens then? And that's where your brother becomes so valuable as this witness that says, no, hang in there. Like, this is all right. Let it come up and out. This is what this is for, actually. So I wonder if you could share a little more about that, Calico. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's about seeing our innocence. And really, when some of these fears come up, the guilt is so enormous that you really have to have someone from the outside that can hold your hand. And it is a self-study. I just want to, you know, I know everyone says, ah, The Course of Miracles, it's a self-study, shouldn't be charging for it, and blah, 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 whatever. And the reality is, that's true. Absolutely correct. It is self-study. It's in my mind, it's in your mind. It's, it's not something anyone can do for each other. We have to have the courage to go within, to see what we're thinking. And once we see what we're thinking, the guilt will come up because it's pretty, it's not a good neighborhood that you're going into. And it can get pretty nasty. And it's like, this is where joining, and the Course talks a lot about joining, joining with a mighty companion. It's not like that mighty companion is going to be able to do anything for you other than to remind you of your innocence, remind you that you are the Christ. And we forget that. As soon as we go into that guilt, we have forgotten why we're here. And it's kind of like, and that's the benefit of having a facilitated program, particularly with rethinking sickness, because it's the body, you know, and again, somewhere in that blue book, it talks about the body is the last projection that we're ever going to have to deal with, because it's pretty personal, you know, it feels real personal, and it feels very real, particularly when you're having pain, it's like, I, 
you know, I'm sorry. You can tell me all, you know, I am not a body, but I'm hurting. And it's like really to allow a mighty companion to join with you and really get you back into the presence. You know, listen to the birds. Be with your breath. And have someone joining in a heartbeat and getting back into the present moment of now. Because in the present of moment of now is the only place that you can go vertical to Christ with. And so once you get into that present moment, there is no pain. I guarantee there is no pain in the present moment. That's how I deal with pain control these days. If I have any pain whatsoever, it's to go into a prayer immediately. Immediately. And that takes me into my Christ mind. And, there, and there's nothing but birds singing in the Christ mind. And so that's what we're going to be doing for each other. There's, you know, we're going to be joining in a Zoom room. We're going to have a private Facebook group for anything that comes up during the week. And it's very private, so everything can be discussed. Um, there's going to be a lot of support on this one. And uh, it's like, I just say, bring your willingness and we'll take, we'll take this journey together and we'll just see where it goes. And that's what my life is about. <laughs> You know, I look at just calico, the form. And from the time I was a child, my mother was ill all the time. And I took care of her. So I was trained well in taking care of. And then I took on being a doctor where I took care of. And I really feel like this <laughs> is the ultimate in being cared for. And it's only that I can do with others. I can't do this by myself. Yeah. And so it's like we're joining in love. <laughs> and I've never done this before. And I just know that Holy Spirit's in charge of it. And Holy Spirit's doing all the heavy lifting. And those people that are coming are extremely courageous. It's like we're, you know, the earth is flat and we're all getting on a boat going, I don't know where we're going, but we're going to prove that it doesn't, it doesn't end. And that's, that's really how I see this whole program. Yeah, we're going to be joining in Christ for six weeks. And what shows up that isn't Christ, we're going to be joining. And we will, we will be together in every aspect of it. It's my ministry. <laughs> I see it as my personal, this incarnation ministry. And uh, it's a perfect script for it. I gave myself the perfect script. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful, Calico. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the heart of this with us. I just want to touch on one last thing before we wrap up here. We've just a few minutes left, but you touched on something in your sharing just now where you said, this is how I'm dealing with pain now. And I just want to highlight the practicality of all of this because it's one thing, as you said, like it's so easy to put to ghost over it and say, I'm not a body, I'm free for I'm still as God created me. But the reality of it is if I'm putting that over top of something else that I'm experiencing, there's a lot of forgiveness that, that needs to happen. And I can just share from my journey, it's been menstrual cramps that have been a very powerful healing tool actually for many, many years. And it, it takes something so practical and direct to be able to move through it. And so I just wanted to share within this course and then Calico, your experiences to highlight what do I do when? Because that's, that's really what you want to know. That's really what this whole journey is. Yeah. Because it's in moving through that fear, whether it shows up as sickness or it shows up as fear in relationships or it shows up as communication, it's all the same. The same answer is, what do I do now? What would you have me do now? And so I just wanted to share that this is going to be so practical because, um, because we need that step-by-step -step guidance. 
And we, yeah. Absolutely. And there's always something to forgive when the pain comes in. It's not there to just get you to go to a doctor or seek outside help or take a day off. It's there for a reason. There's some thought in the mind that needs to be forgiven. And this is where I'm going to be pulling out a lot of the tools that Living Miracles offers. And we can, we'll be doing them together if necessary. I mean, I know I talked to you this morning about the Spiri app. And I don't do Spiri a lot. I used very, in, early on, I was doing it all the time. And now it just comes when it comes. And, and this past week, I've had a couple of opportunities to, to download and use the new Spiri app. And I just thank you, Laverne. <laughs> <laughs> the app is divine, and it pulled up what I needed to see for myself, which was, I'm playing tiny. It's safer to be tiny than to be in my magnitude. And, um, and there's fear with that, but it's just, you know, do the spirit, get to the belief, go, well, I don't want to live tiny. I mean, that's not what I go around telling myself. Oh, yeah, I'd prefer to be tiny. It's like, well, that's not true. and so then it's joining with mighty companions like I did with you, of just, I'm a no, I'm scared, and I can't do this by myself, and just joining with a mighty companion that can hold the space of my eternal greatness. You don't get that from just anybody. And uh, I just thank you for over the years of joining me in my eternal greatness, as I do yours. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, this brings us full circle here. We could have called this show Fear of Fabulous. So that's what I'm going to name it right now. <laughs> Fear of Fabulous. Um, and in that way, it feels lighter in my mind. So that's wonderful because sickness can feel so heavy. But that's all it is. Fear of Fabulous. So, yeah, thank you, Calico. It's such an honor to walk with you on this journey. I'm just so grateful for our joining today. And yeah, just the witness that you are in my mind and for us all. So mm. do you have any, anything to share? Any, any final no, words I for everyone to share? To join us. I just invite people to join us. I mean, it, this, I don't know if this will ever happen again, but it's happening starting, well, the 31st, the first assignments go out because there will be some homework, exercises, just things to be with. This is an experiential program. This is not, oh, good, if I memorize this prayer, I've got it. This is totally experiential in our minds, and it's to clear the fear of whatever's there, to return to Christ and joy. Yeah, my commitment for myself. Oh, beautiful. Well, again, thank you so much, Calico. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and a very Merry Christmas to you all. We'll see you next week. Thank you.